Action. One day, at the time of the Garuda festival at Sri Rangam, a handsome man with broad shoulders was walking along with an exquisitely beautiful large-eyed lady. All his mind, heart and looks were so fixed on her that he was not conscious of the rest of the world. In his hands, he held fans which moved to and fro to her benefit. As Sri Ramanuja was returning by the same way after worship, his eyes fell on the strange sight. Sri Ramanuja sent for the man and upon inquiry learnt that he was Dhanurdasa and the lady was Hemamba. Dhanurdasa had been protecting the most beautiful bewitching eyes of that lady only because he had not found any other eyes more beautiful than hers. Sri Ramanuja was astonished at the devotion of Dhanurdasa. Upon Sri Ramanuja confirming that he could show more beautiful eyes than that of Hemamba, Dhanurdasa assured that he would then adore them. Sri Ramanuja took Dhanurdasa to Lord Ranganatha and showed him in the light of the camphor flame the two large lotus eyes of the Lord. Dhanurdasa could not turn his eyes away and tears started flowing from his eyes and he experienced supreme beatitude. After regaining outward consciousness, Dhanurdasa and Hemamba fell at the feet of Sri Ramanuja, the boundless ocean of mercy, who graciously freed both of them from the darkness of delusion. One day, Mahapurna had set fire to the dead body of a devotee who was a Chandala by caste. When Sri Ramanuja with all reverence wanted to know why he did so, Mahapurna drew analogy with certain happenings in Sri Rama's life and said that he was neither greater than Lord Rama nor was the devotee lower than Jatayu. Even though Sri Rama could not light the pyre for his father Dasharatha, he had taken all pains to cremate Jatayu by himself because of his being a great devotee. At that time, the Chola kingdom was undergoing a spiritual turmoil. The king, Kulotunga Choran, was trying to make all the people accept the doctrine of the spiritual faith and follow the path of worship prescribed thereunder. Therefore, Sri Ramanuja decided to find his way out of Sri Rangam. After an arduous journey, Sri Ramanuja reached Yadavadri, otherwise known as Tirunarayanapuram. The present name of this place is Melakkotte. This is Melakkotte as it exists today, with a well-structured temple within which is seated the Lord Tirunarayanan. Here, Sri Ramanuja stayed for almost 12 years. Sri Ramanuja loved this place specially because of the abundant availability of white earth with which Sri Vaishnavas put the divine mark on the forehead. Tradition says that Sri Ramanuja, while taking a stroll in the Tulsi grove, came across an image underneath an ant hill. The image was that of Tirunarayanan and was lifelike and had captivating features. With the king's patronage, Sri Ramanuja founded here a great temple for Tirunarayanan. Lord Tirunarayanan appeared in the dream of Sri Ramanuja and told him that there is no Utsava Vigraha for him and hence he has not been able to go out of the temple and bless his devotees and asked Sri Ramanuja to bring at an early date his mobile deity which was with a Muslim emperor. Being thus commanded, Sri Ramanuja set out on his mission immediately. As he reached the emperor's palace, he was received warmly by the emperor who granted Sri Ramanuja's request. The emperor had in his possession many deities which were removed on various occasions from different temples. Not able to identify the Utsava Vigraha, 
Sri Ramanuja, who was assigned this task by the God himself, placing his mind at the feet of the Lord, called out, Selvapalleva, meaning thereby, Please come, Sampat Kumara. To everybody's amazement, Sampat Kumara came and sat on the lap of Sri Ramanuja. Sri Ramanuja, without losing time, took leave of the emperor and started his journey back to Melakote along with Sampat Kumara. The daughter of the emperor loved the beauty of the image. Her love was so much that it solemnized into bhakti. As the princess could not withstand the separation of her from Sampat Kumara, she started in search of her beloved idol. Her sustained efforts brought about the union she was longing for. The princess reached Melakkote. Sri Ramanuja and his disciples were amazed to see her devotion. As Sampat Kumara was installed much before the arrival of the princess in a secret spot inside the temple, the princess decided to spend the remaining days of her life at Melakkote, enjoying the bliss born out of communion with Lord of her heart and ultimately became one with him. The princess ceased to identify the self with the body and so had no fetters of caste or religion. In the body alone are found name, caste and religion. In fact, till this day, the sacred image of the princess is being worshipped in all Vaishnavite temples as Bibi Natyar. Earlier, Many low-caste people had helped Sri Ramanuja to bring in safety the image of Sampat Kumara to Melakote. Hence, at the temple of Tirunarayanapuram, the low-caste people were given the right to enter the temple for three days every year. One can imagine the extent of revolution it would have been when about a thousand years ago, Sri Ramanuja in his own way established that to a true devotee, caste can be no bar. Sri Ramanuja's concern for the people extended beyond the scope of caste and religion. He also took keen interest in their social well-being. During the period of his stay at Melakote, there was acute problem for water, and hence all those living in that area were in great distress. In order to alleviate their misery, Sri Ramanuja organized for construction of a tank which was called Moti Talab. Sri Ramanuja was to leave Merakote after staying for 12 years. The devotees were sorely afflicted by the thought of separation which was to follow. Sri Ramanuja, moved by the devotion of the devotees, organized for an image of himself to be made. And after transmitting his powers, he handed it over to the devotees, stating that they would get the spiritual inspiration from the image as much as they got from himself. This image at Melakote is called Tamar Uganda Tirumeni. It is said that once during the year 2500 BC, at the beginning of Kali Yuga, Andal prayed to the Lord Sundarabahu that if Sri Ranganatha would graciously accept her hand, she would offer a hundred jars of sweet rice, a karavadisal, with milk, and hundred jars of butter along with other delicacies. The Lord fulfilled this prayer of Andal. While studying the Prabandhas of Arvar, Sri Ramanuja found that Andal could not fulfill her word. Therefore, he took upon himself this task, which he completed with all devotion. Soon, he left for Srivalliputur, the birthplace of Andal, to inform her that her oath had been fulfilled. Tradition says that here Andal called Sri Ramanuja Anna for his act befitting a brother. Thereafter, Sri Ramanuja came to be known as Koil Anna. While Sri Ramanuja was staying at Sri Rangam, the devotees at Sri Perambudur, the birthplace of Sri Ramanuja, made an image of him and invoking life in it, according to the Vedic rites, installed it inside a huge temple. 
Sri Ramanuja could know all that was happening at Sri Perumbudur even while being at Sri Rangam. Captivated by the devotion of the people at his native place, he transmitted some of his powers into the image there. As he did this out of his own will, the image came to be known as Tan Ugarnda Tirumeni. As per the will of the Lord, the large-hearted incarnation of Lakshmana, Bhagavan Srimat Ramanujacharya, the Ugya Vibhutipati, grew indrawn and silent in preparation to enter the Supreme Realm. Sri Ramanuja, before entering the Supreme Realm of God, transmitted his own power into an image of his by breathing into the crown of the head. As he transformed all his powers into this image, it came to be known as Tanana Tirumeni. Around noon on Saturday, the tenth day of the bright half of the month of Maha in the year 1137, Sri Ramanuja entered into the supreme realm of the feet of Lord Vishnu. After sanctifying the earth for the good and the happiness of many for 120 years, Sri Ramanuja made this world an abode of happiness like Vaikuntha. He gave gems of instructions by which the devotees could enjoy happiness and peace, not only in this life, but also in lives to come.